which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Citizens' comments. Anyone here? The big crowd. Anybody on Zoom? Okay. Hey, comment. Huh? Oh, oh, you have comment? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want to say this. Um, this is very difficult. Um, so I've been on the board for 16 years. I respect our staff. I respect our administration. And I respect our students, a large portion of our students. Um, recent events in me leaving these meetings, I have complete anxiety when I leave here because of a lack of, I think, accomplishments personally. Unfortunately, today's society has created a Jimmy and Susie gets a trophy for anything, and now Jimmy and Susie have an attorney. And our administration and our teachers are held, in progress. held with no um, recourse on the small group of students that is causing chaos amongst our own staff and students. Some of it which I look back at generations of uh, just pride, and that pride is gone. And I can't do this anymore. And it hurts me to say this, but I am retiring, resigning, effective immediately. Okay. No, nope, I have to. Um, something happened last week, and I'm probably going to have to defend my son. And I cannot do that as a board of ed member. I've enjoyed my time, but um, the, the regulations that the state have put on things that you can and cannot say back to a student. When I was a student, if I did what some of the stuff is going on to our teachers and administration, I would have had my head bashed by my parents. And unfortunately, these students, a small group, have taken away what it means to be a turtle or tiger. And it's very disheartening. And I leave here um, frustrated. I go home. Heather hears it. She hears it the next day and for three days later. And it's, it's not worth it. Honestly, my fight is over. So <clears throat> I apologize. I everything I've done for 16 years, you guys, I love it. Okay, hey. I still support this school, but I can't do it. Thank you. Tom, call me tomorrow, all right? Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other citizens' comments? Okay, seeing none, educational update. <coughs> Superintendent. Uh, so, um, we've been busy working on the budget. Um, we're in the process of getting ready for some upcoming events, our winter concerts, um, our Chinese New Year celebration, some fun things district-wide. Um, so, and we're working on uh, the upcoming theater production. Um, so there's a lot happening um, on the extracurricular side of things. Um, and um, we are being monitored by the state for our alliance. That'll come up at the beginning of March, at the end of this week. Um, our folks are putting all the data that has to be collected from the mid-year uh, progress monitoring and sending that to the state. Um, and um, I will tell you this, uh, just, just as a bit of FYI, um, the powers in the kindergarten classrooms, um, the missing powers, we've seen a dip in the Dibbles reading scores in kindergarten mid-year. So it, it's got to be directly correlated to the lack of support. So um, out of all the things that we're pushing forward through in this budget, it's, these missing positions have impacted learning. And we have the data to back it up. So just thought I'd let you know that. Good. And we know how important the powers are. Uh, anybody have questions for the superintendent? Just a quick question. Um, how can can you? I was on a plane yesterday. Oh, and I, all right. <laughs> um, uh, is there any update on the tutoring program on how that's moving forward for on the, the, six, what the tutoring, the math tutoring, the math the tutoring program? Yes, we did have a, um, and I'll have Patty uh, give me an update, but. <laughs> 
HDTs, some of the <clears throat> bugs that we've, this is just growing pains, right, by having um, uh, high dosage tutoring within the school day, some of the bugs that we've um, come across is that, you know, there's extra uh, PBIS award things going on during the school day, which is running at the same time that the um, HDT tutoring is, is on. So they've figured out just this past week that they have to do those events on a, on a C period rather than um, when those tutoring sessions, because for the students that are in tutoring, they shouldn't miss some of the fun pop-up activities that are happening for PBIS and those other things. That was the only real glitch. Um, so far, almost all of the tutors have been hired. Uh, the high school is starting, started up last week. They were a couple of weeks behind. Um, the tutors that we have, Patty reports, are of high quality. Um, so we're very pleased with the people that Catapult Learning has, um, has employed. Uh, so um, as far as how the students are doing, they just got into the routine and they missed a few because of these pop-up events that we felt was unfair for them not to go to. Um, and so now we've got a better schedule so that they get those things um, on that C period. So. But it is going well. Um, I did have a meeting with the state. They were very keenly interested because this is at the national level. Um, the federal government is really looking at um, investing in high dosage tutoring. Um, uh, Congressman Courtney is looking at Thompson in particular because obviously he, this is his region, but not only that, he serves on the educational committee for the, for the country. And so he's very interested and I have to give him periodic updates on HDT. Okay. <clears throat> Be nice if they pay for it. Though. Yeah, correct. <laughs> All right, any other questions for the superintendent? All right, let's move right into the budget pre uh, discussion, presentation discussion. So, so what we did last week is we took notes from the comments everybody made and Bill and I went back and tried to make some um, ch changes or add slides to see if they would be something you want to include in the presentation. Remember, this is all draft form. One of the comments that was made is that no one really understands the process that the budget goes through. <coughs> so I try to, as best I can, and thank you, for Danielle, for the graphics, um, is to try to let people know, but this was really too much to put on a PowerPoint slide. So if you go to slide number uh, number <coughs> on page 10, number 20, I try to take kind of this information and collapse it onto yeah, this, this one is, slide. This, this is. Um, and more or less, how the budget came to um, Bill and I and remember that people put their budgets together um, and sometimes it's not only what I need, but sometimes it's a bit of a wish list, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so when we get the budget, it's always high like this. And then we go through it and then we make our, our reductions. And some of it was in capital, so there were big ticket items that you are well aware we took out. And so we made that reduction, but it was still an increase of 967. And then at the last board meeting, the Board of Ed also made a reduction down to the 885. So I took this, try to collapse it here on this um, progression of how the budget is put together. I don't know if it tells a story, but I think it tells a story that at least I reduced it and you reduced it, and now it's gonna go to the town. I, I mean, I think this graphic, I think, is awesome. The only one comment and possible suggestion is whether you maybe even, like, do on this this last bit where, you know, the finalized proposed budget number, the Board of Ed one, um, saying this reflects, like, b the basic needs to, to be successful. You know what I mean? Like, this, we, we've already chopped off wish list stuff. You know, th this this is... This is the bare bones already. We've done the cutting already. Yeah. You know? so it's funny that you have that because I have that in here as my note: capital versus required versus wish list. And I had mm -hmm. like breaking the bar down into that. The 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 big bar. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. Capital the, the big versus bar. required versus wish list. 
right? I mean, it and it can show that the wish list has been removed, right? You know, basically. It, it, well, and right. that's what I'm capital has been reduced, right? Yeah. I assume right. that's you know, the required is going to be 95 percent uh, of the middle bar, and then it's going to be 98 percent of the end bar, yeah. right? right? But what we what I think is important that we need to show the citizens is that although it's wish list items, there's also capital, big chunks of capital that are in there as well, because there's been a lot of people over the last couple of years that have complained about not preparing. Right? The school is not preparing for the inevitable capital failure of X. Oh, yeah. And I think it's about time that we say, look, we're trying to prepare, but we know that this is not going to be palatable to the, to the citizens. So we're giving you this. Okay. And I, I can, um, I actually have, I have a graphic from another presentation that I can, I can send Danny's way to, for a little assistance on that. Well, if you send it to me and Danielle, mm -hmm. we'll work on it together. Yep. Okay. So I'll go back to the beginning of the presentation, and then, so all of these slides can be reordered. Um, we put them in, but. They're in no specific order, and I know the board usually moves them around. Um, the benefits of the town and the BOE collaboration, the only thing we added on there was the HR position and um, the uh, fuel insurance and health care contracts for cost savings on the town side. Um, well, on that side, I think did you, um, we had grant review too. I don't know if we want to include that. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with that particular yeah. grant slide. I didn't know if you wanted something separate or do you wanted me to... I mean, there's very few grants that we share. No, but I'm saying that you utilize Tira, who is a town employee, to sometimes secure research. Oh, right, right, all Tira. That sort of stuff, That's right, you, know? you are right. I missed um, that one. And that does benefit both town. Good catch, and thank you. So that was the only change on that <laughs> slide. And then, Bill, you want to talk about your slide, the budget driver slide, those two on page six? Um, sorry, can I, can I uh, slide 10. If possible, um, could we possibly asterisk the more than one referenda years? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And then put that as a footnote where it went, it failed, we went back, it failed, we went back, and finally passed. So some of them are going to have two asterisks, some of them are going to have one, some of them are going to have none. Some have okay. four, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. But and I the, think... And each one is about five grand or eight grand. Right. Cost to plus, the town. Yeah. Cost to the town plus whatever was reduced out of our budget. Right. I, I, yeah, you're seeing where I'm going with that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's to put in the context underneath that slide, so when yeah. we're presenting it, it's, it's not only, hey, this is where it passed for these years, but in the process, we spent $15,000 to get it here. Or yep. twenty four thousand or whatever. Twenty four, which is a para. Right. You know, so every time we go and do this nonsense it's it's a para educator, essentially. Yeah, sorry. Um so I, I know in the past years we had indicated the rate of inflation, which I think is important. I'm I'm just not so sure if it is as important the past couple of years just since we are exceeding inflation. Um, do we want to continue to keep that on this particular slide or just I, can't, I didn't. I missed the end of that, Heather. Sure. So, in, in, if, if you can, if you look at the rate of inflation, in almost um, every year, with the exception of the past, this past year, and potentially this year now, we have always been under under the rate of but, inflation. But this this past year, as well as this proposed year, um, we are not. So I'm just wondering what we want to do. Jess. Matt had his hand up first. Oh, I, I, I think we keep it in. It's it's showing you know boom that you've got that eight in there and mm -hmm. percent our percent change was point seven three. I mean so we're not even we're, we've got a we're long way to catch up. Right, we're behind. We're, we're yeah. still right. way that way was, behind. That was going to be my point. Yeah, my, so. and I was going to jump on that. The only other thing I would do is just do the compounding rate of inflation next to it. Right. I know I got a fancy word. Sorry, <laughs> but but it'll it'll then show that even though the rate of inflation went down, 
we're still, we're still behind the, behind the eight, eight ball. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And do we want to say like say that on this slide? Maybe at the bottom, say his, you know, just have a summary statement that or no? Again, do we I think want that's people to extrapolate. I think that's important own. in the presentation context. Okay. I, don't necessarily I was going to say yeah. the same thing. It's, there's, it's just so much you want to put down here because okay. they're yeah. not going to read it anyway. They'll just complain about it. But if that's part of the presentation to explain it, that might that might come out better. The key points in the presenter <coughs> notes yeah. are, although the rate of inflation has gone down, we had a year where it was 8, and we're still catching up to the year it was only 1.4. <laughs> Other changes that we should be looking at? Yeah, I'm so. going to bring um, <coughs> back to page six. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Slides 11 and 12. So, <clears throat> starting with slide 11, uh, this is an attempt to capture the main drivers of the budget uh, uh, with the top two uh, broken out to show a little more detail. Um, You'll notice uh, there are actually two salary buckets. So the top bucket, we always we often talk about contractual salary increases. So I tried to keep that as clean as possible, related to paraeducators, teachers, custodial maintenance, and and administrators. Uh, so the total there is six hundred and sixty-four thousand of the eight eighty-five. Uh, the healthcare increase I was able to break into two pieces. Uh, the five percent rate increase we expect based on the employees that were present in the budget last year. And then the second number there, the 138, is um, coverage changes and new employees, or, or employees, I want to be careful here, employees who were not budgeted for last year. They may not necessarily be new. Uh, however, uh, that uh, amounts to 268. Transportation increase is the DATCO increase, per, as you guys have heard 100 times, 5% in the contract after a year of no increase last year. Uh, Non-contractual salary increases are, are folks like myself, um, uh, Michelle, uh, no, just non-contract. I just wanted to keep that separate. I combined electric water and sewer into utilities for an increase of 30,000. Uh, the culinary program comes in at just under 22,000. And then I collapsed um, lines that are below 10,000 and the, the vast majority of those lines are below $6,000. Uh, into that final 213 uh, simply because we're trying to work on one page here. Um, so that comes down to total budget additions of a million three uh, and then we had total budget reductions uh, that offset that to get us to our increase of 885,000. Okay. So that's what this slide is trying to drive home. Justin has a question. Go ahead. I, th I thought he was going to do both slides. Go ahead. Well, I want to get him on this one first. All right, good. <laughs> um, can we asterisk and footnote on the health care increases that that is the expectation? Sure. I don't want anybody to think that that is a firm number and us be held to it. Um, not held to it, you, you know what I'm saying. You know, uh, I'll, I'll make it 5% expected increase or anticipated. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then coverage changes new employees anticipated um, next one is on the non-contractual salary increases can we just put in parentheses next to that at the number of people who that impacts sure because if they look at that and say oh 40,000 that's all going to superintendent ah but if it's 40,000 over 12 people right it makes a difference uh, yeah and I'm not in that line <laughs> <laughs> well, most, most, just so people, you know. most people don't know that right yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then my last one was, is it 21,000 specifically for culinary or yes. does 21,000 support the entire path? Like, could mm -hmm. there be other monies that are in other pathways that can be shifted to culinary? Like, is it just the pathways program pool and it just happens to all go towards culinary or is it all culinary? It's all culinary. Oh, culinary. Okay. culinary. This, is, this, is, this is literally food, paper supplies, cleaning supplies. Okay. What I'm happened? Yeah, what like happened that. this year is those dollars came out of the curriculum line, yep. and so it really belongs in a line by itself at the high school. Um, so we we're showing it that way. So can we put again add next to the pathways because we've we've titled these the pathways right? 
the culinary New program, pathway. let's either culinary pathway mm -hmm. or culinary program, pathway. parentheses Got pathway, it. whatever it is. I just yeah. want to keep it the branding on that. So this will just lead to my question. I know this was in the curriculum budget, so it's coming out of there. Can we show a difference, or was that just kind of added in at the last minute last year? So you know what I mean. If if we're moving it here, it should come out of somewhere else. So last year when we put the budget together. Um, we were building the uh, culinary space, yeah. but the one thing we forgot about, and we had the money, we forgot about the food. Supplies, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Literally. Um, so we started to pull it out of cu um, curriculum. Okay. Okay. How, many, how many people are in, or anticipated next year to be in culinary? We I think it's a fantastic, and it should be everybody, but. So <clears throat> currently there are 80 students. Um, we had 120 something. Um, at, that signed up, so students were turned away. Yeah. I anticipate those classes to be full again. Wow. So 80, 80 something or 100, do you think? I would say 80. Okay. That, um, keeping the class size at 15, he doesn't want more than 15 students yeah, with yeah. knives in the yeah. kitchen at one time. I know what yeah, that's yeah, doing yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. awesome. That it, that's amazing. Just, we just hit that one right, and so yep. many people that are interested, you know. Talking about the welding and the boat building and everything yeah. we've done in the past, but this one really is is huge. I think the CNA too was pretty. Yeah. pretty it's practical, pretty I think, yeah. as well. Even if they don't go into a um, a culinary career, um, that they learn skills that um, are going to be a life skill. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing home ec anymore. Correct. So here you're learning you're learning how to cook. Even my so my daughter initially wanted to go to Ellis for culinary. She switched to masonry, but. She learned a lot in the little bit that she did, and no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Um, <laughs> concrete, cake batter, same thing. Yeah, she's good cook. She's got her hand up. Um, but it's so it's said two hundred something dollars per kid, and to, to to and if half of them come out with a certification for color, mm -hmm. that's money well well spent. Yeah. yeah. Kathleen had something. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Did you say Kathleen? Yeah, she yeah. said it. Got her hand up. Oh, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm just concerned that they'll ask any, anything in that 442 Kathleen, you there? Yes, can you hear me? She's oh, she's, 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 Can you hear me? Mm. Bummer. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Kathleen, we can hear you clearly on here. Okay. All right. I'm just I'm just concerned that in the four hundred and forty two thousand that there isn't something that they're going to question. In the four hundred forty two thousand there's something they're not there's something they're gonna question in, in terms of the reductions, Kathleen? Yes. yes. Yeah. That could be part of the presentation context. Yeah, I think that's is con there a, con Is there a major component of that 442,000? Yeah, reduction. Yes, the, the, the two largest pieces are the 100,000 that we pulled out of special education and the use of $80,000 of special ed excess cost funding. So, so shouldn't we show those separately? I know you I want to get, get it on one page. page. I th yeah, I think you're going to just confuse people. A reduction's a reduction, and that can go in the presentation. Right. That, I think right. that can go in the presentation context, like we've been saying with other things. So you know, speaker You'll make notes. the budget driver a little smaller so you can get those. Can't read it. No. I can't hear anything. She said. She said, make the title of the slide smaller so you can fit more in the table, but. Again, I think if we make the table too busy, mm -hmm. it's people are going to get lost, and I don't, I don't necessarily know that getting them lost is worth explaining the reduction line. It's a reduction. Yep, I I, I, I totally agree. Yep, you don't want it to be too busy because once they get confused, there's no pulling them back. Fine. To me, a to me, a reduction is more important than what's making an increase. When you're doing a forty-four thousand or twenty-three thousand dollar increase, I would like to see a hundred thousand dollar decrease. I don't know 
why this isn't working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, again, the, the decrease can be explained in the presentation. Mm -hmm. To me, it's me better eye candy. candy. No. Well, because you understand it. Right. Okay. Right? And, and you, know, you know what goes into it. You know how it's made up. You know how it affects everything. The general public, the, the 14 people that will actually come, uh, I, I would be willing to bet that most of them don't know how this is put together. And so during the presentation, if we explain why this went down, it, it might, it might okay. be clearer right. for those people okay. and whoever's on Zoom. We had contractual increases of 664,000. We had reductions of 442,000. In, and it, it was all mm -hmm. by reviewing the budget, making it more efficient in special education and excess cost. I mean, it's certainly up to the board if they want to, if they want that in or not. I just get the sense that we should just keep it simple. But if anybody's got a strong feeling about this, <coughs> speak up now. It's, it's already this table's already plenty full for a presentation, a visual presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I I, I I tend to agree. I think that's got to be part of that. The presenters notes the part narrative of the, part of the narrative needs to right. kind of explain that so yeah. and if people want that as a appendix of information later they can yeah. ask for it and get it then yeah. right. yep. all right um other questions concerns about this slide um just <clears throat> on the formatting for like total budget additions if there's a way to make that a little bit clearer that that's a total of all of those lines because I know we have people in the community that are just going to add up the whole thing and be like that 885 number doesn't isn't right. So if we could just make the I think if you shift <laughs> if, yeah, I see what Jess is saying. Yeah. If we shift the where it says total total total, if we just shift those to the right of that column. Yeah, just something that and yeah. then and, and can we please, please, please make sure that all of the math adds up? <laughs> There's been year after year after year, we have a pie chart that comes up to 104%, and then we have lines that, that make no sense. I'm sure that it was never you, but. <laughs> and just part of the presentation context on this, because we hear a lot in the community that the teachers are overpaid, paras are overpaid, um, superintendent is overpaid part of like the context notes or the discussion in the narrative that we have some of that backup data about how that's not actually the case for our district um, I think just needs to be because I I constantly see it of why can't the teachers take a freeze why can't the parents take a freeze why can't Bill take a freeze that's the the conversation that we're seeing yeah and that's and that's every year it's the same right. thing and if so if every year everybody got a freeze and yeah great it would be great for the district but we'd have no teachers we'd have right. no superintendent we'd have nobody because nobody wants to work for free and what, or ne or negative negative money because if you don't get a small increase you're not even keeping up with cost of living and blah 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 but right. so if we can have some kind of a just have have some kind of numbers in our back pocket that way when somebody does bring it up we can say hey this is we're we, we're, we, we're behind the rest of the region we used to have an appendix a couple of years ago with some of that information we, I don't know if you're planning on doing that we we didn't because the presentation got really long I know uh, previous we had all that appendix information just it, a, it's just up to the board is this is this in PowerPoint or slides PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah. So there's speaker's notes? Yeah, that can be. Yeah, I think we just put that all in the speaker's notes, and if we have to, we can print the speaker's notes as an appendice to the presentation after the fact. Yeah. But, but to Jess's point. I'm sorry? I'm saying it's the same amount of work either way, whether. Right. It just it hides them out of the general. Like, it, right. it doesn't end up adding 70 slides to it, and it adds the context under the slides where it belongs. Right. But, okay. but we used to have the appendix in the back with all the relative information mm -hmm. and where you could point it out. But to Jess's point, you know, if you have average salaries on that back page, they could refer to it themselves, and it'll mm -hmm. always be there, and they can't say, well, they're lying to us, but it's there. I, I liked that, and I don't want to make more work for anybody. 
and I wouldn't even know, I wouldn't want one page with just that. But if you can think of other things to throw in, you know, relative information. I don't know. I mean, again, the, I think the presentation to the public can go as it sits, right? And then yeah, oh what yeah, we post yeah. to the web page can the have the speakers' notes, yes. whatever, yeah. and backup data yeah. and stuff. Okay. As long as all the numbers add up again. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, Slide 12. Yep. yep. Um, there was a request for a, for a breakdown of the overall funding contributions. Uh, we, we renamed the, um, uh, the, the each component, taxpayer contribution, state contribution, and special education excess costs from, from how it was presented previously. Um, it's a pretty stark picture there that uh, that special education, mm -hmm. special education excess cost sliver uh, I had to move the number outside of the pot, <coughs> outside of the pie. Uh, but those are the main components that add up to the to the total budget of twenty one four eighty nine. Can we can we make the special education gray? Can we make that like bright yellow or something? Mm -hmm. Since it's such a tiny sliver, it's it's looking like it's almost gone. <laughs> just part the line. of the line that separates red and from dark yeah. gray. You know. Um, is there a way to quantify? How much of our programming comes from grants? That's you, you do an awful lot of work to to get these grants, and that's yeah. Be I do in have here. to put a grant slide. I, in. That's I'm hoping it's more than 149 thousand. I know it's more than 149 thousand dollars, so it would overshadow our yeah. pittance that we receive from the. We need to create state a grant dingbats. slide. And so, where does that the grants all come out of the state contribution piece of this pie? Or no, it's in addition to. It's they're all separate. If if there was a grant, it would be another piece of pie in here, a different color. So this doesn't. Oh, this overall. This doesn't consider the grant funding. That's that's. I don't know. Off budget sounds sounds scary to people, but that's outside of the BOE budget. So should it not it's be revenue outside the board's budget? But we're showing the excess because that that. Special education excess cost is actually called the excess cost grant, right? We actually we actually push special ed excess costs out of Board of Ed over to those grants. So you could make an argument it's removed. It was requested that it be specifically shown, and given that it's that small, I didn't think it was that big a deal. I guess I haven't done the math on this yet, but so the seven, the th no, this does add up to the twenty one. Mm -hmm. It does. So that grant funding has to come out is is part of that thirteen. It's not even on. It's here. not even it's in not here. here. So it, that's it outside of. So it's in addition to the twenty one million dollar yes. budget. Okay. Right. Yes. So maybe maybe just a blurb on the bottom there saying X amount of grant dollars secured. A separate slide so it doesn't confuse yep. this. Right. Yes. I, yeah. I would think <clears throat> if if you were going to guess, how much do you think we have? In grants uh, ballpark. I mean, what? half a million. Um, not quite. No, no, because I know what we get for Title One, Two, um, IDA. Maybe a hundred. Oh, that's it. Is the alliance funding included in that? And the 200 for alliance. I would really have to sit down and add it all up. Oh, yeah, I just. But I mean, it might be Bill nice, though, to Bill have, have a slide it. that says, yeah. you know, you know, showing, like, uh, how much dollars, and, and you don't have to maybe. Those I mean, are, uh, and, and they're all salaries, right? right. Uh, most of our grant money is paying for some of these salaries that would have been on right. the board budget. I, and I. I so I think, but I think it would be perceived by the taxpayer that that, that if, if you've secured three hundred, it should be lowering say, the base right budget, and, it is. and that's well, how no, people right. get confused. And and it's that you've not only secured it, but that you've soli you solicit you you went after these things to save the tax you know to save the taxpayers' burden here. You know, certain grants are by an allocation that we get based on a formula that. The state determines, so that's how Title One is allocated, two, three, four, and IDEA. So you get an allocation, and then the district has to go into the allocation and program for those dollars, and then those your plan has to be approved by the state. 
So that's one set of um, grant funds. Most of those position, most of those dollars are used specifically to pay for positions that are in the district. If we didn't have those dollars, it would be on the BOE budget. So I guess I think what everybody's asking here is this pie consists of the twenty one million and change that we've been looking at for the Correct. last couple of weeks. This does not include the additional grant funds that you secure on an annual basis to supplement what is not in the budget. That's right. Right. So if it's three hundred thousand dollars that pays for X number of staff, whether it's teachers or paras or psychologists or whatever, that's do that many staff that we would have to pay for out of our pocket. That's correct. So well, there's some grants that supplement and some that supplant, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's some that cannot be taken part of the budget. You, are, it's in addition to the budget. Other mm -hmm. ones can be intermingled. So, that's right. Which is important. Okay. <clears throat> that they yeah. know that that because we get the alliance grant doesn't mean you can reduce the budget by two hundred thousand dollars right by any means right but, but they will say but on the flip side of that if we if if we do gooder <laughs> and we i know if we do gooder and we get rid of and and we don't we are no longer an alliance district that is two hundred thousand dollars that does have to go into our budget because we're still going to need to pay for those positions. If we're going to continue keeping those positions, they would have to go into our right. budget. Which is why I think it's important that we show those dollars as part of this contribution, <coughs> even uh, if it's an overlay, yeah. overlay I, highlights. I think a grant slide yeah. with a little, with, I think that would help. In addition, yes. you know, noting yeah. that it's in addition to this pie, there is another pie that we go out and we secure additional grant funding to supplement or supplant. Right. Our BOE budget. And, and, and to go to. Gooder. <laughs> yeah, see? You're learning. To Bill's point about supplanting, which is very important, is that when you get these dollars from wherever the funding source is from, especially under these title grants, you can't just say, oh, we got another $100,000. Let's take Melinda Smith's salary and dump it on that grant. You're not allowed to do that. It has to be a more, it has to be in, a, in addition to. So that supplant word becomes really important. And right. I think that's a, sorry. So, but it, it still comes back to, I'm use a psychologist as an example. If, you know, we, we lost a $100,000 grant that's paying for a psychologist, and we as a board determine we really need that psychologist, we would, it would have to, we would have to add $100,000 right. into our budget. So yeah. it, it's still, it's still, money that we're saving the, that we're saving the town by having these grants some of them are somewhat automatic like the alliance because it, it comes because we're an alliance district some of them are title whatever whatever that the title grants are more of an allocation that you program for right. based on a formula and they can go up and down and fluctuate from year to year but for the most part stay fairly consistent at least for the seven years that i've been here right. they've been fairly consistent they, they haven't gone up a whole heck of a lot, even though the people's salaries who are on those right. have gone up. Um, so those have been consistent. The others are those grants that are competitive that we've gone after to get positions, and then we get to that point, right, the grant expires, right. and then we determine that we need that position, and then we're at that point of a funding cliff again. Right. Kind of like with the Art Bessel money. Right. 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 And so Obama did that, too, by giving us $400,000 one year. The race to the top money. Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah. And then it's one year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you realize, oh, that was really nice to have. And right. so I think I think a slide twelve B, if you will, a grant slide, and then the context of what goes into securing those grants and like you said, some of the you just because we get a hundred thousand dollars for X doesn't mean it can go to supplement Melinda's salary and we can reduce right. it somewhere else. Right. There has to be justification, there has to be submittals. Mm -hmm. Like we the Grant, people, I think some people think grant money is an application and the money comes in and you're done and you have nothing more to show for it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but exactly, I mean, even the excess cost grant, right? The $149,000 excess cost grant, that's not a just, we submit a bill and they send us back money. It's, we've got to justify every single piece of it. Good catch. Right. So I think, a slide mm -hmm. with the grants and then the context about what goes into 
securing and retaining the grant is important. Right. And then yep. to Bill's point, the supplement versus supplant. Mm -hmm. But that also leads into a discussion later on of not being reliant on grants to pay salary. And that's something exactly. that we need to yes. be working towards that because be. that's, we get nailed on it every so often when those grants come to an end and then we're like, we need this much to be able to continue this. And yeah. so that's something we need to. I mean, but even the Alliance grant right. is in forever, Ever. right? Right. Hopefully. We only have one more year. <laughs> yeah. Um, after this year, and then we have to go back to the legislature and lobby again for two more years. It's well, and that's ongoing. Hopefully, they change the law so that we don't have to beg for what's ours every year. But I think it's important that we, I mean, it, even if it's just internal to the board, I think it's important that we understand what that total number is of grants that you secure every year, so that at least it's in our heads. Yep. When we're talking about and what it pays for. Correct. Right. Yeah. And it eliminates that. They're hiding money conversation too. Yeah. Or they, they yeah. found they found money. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> no, we just applied for a grant to to supplement or supplant what wasn't provided in the first place. You like that word. Well, you know, it's better than gooder. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions on this slide? Comments? Any other, any other slides that yes. we need to look at? Um, in number 13, we're still working on with Chris. Um, uh, Bill did some formatting around that to make it a little bit more eye-pleasing, but uh, there's other information we want to put in there. One of the slides that you had asked uh, last time was uh, to put some sort of a visual together about special education costs and then how they exceed the individual school budgets. And um, we had it in a chart form, and then I wasn't loving the way it looked, so we put it in this pyramid form. So I don't know if that. It's eye catching. Yeah. I like that. I like it. It's yeah. different than Dan anything thank else. Thank you, Danielle, for making the pyramid. Yeah. Thank you, Danielle. Um, <laughs> my, my only comment to this would be to add the census next, the census numbers next to the schools. Mm -hmm. The number of students? Yep. Yep. And I don't think it, I think we could also go to the dollar, do the dollar sign and then just the capital M. Okay. Instead of spelling out the word million on each, unless anybody Got feels it. differently. No, that, I think that's. Yeah. Although the words million spelled out is pretty eye-catching. But I like the font growing. That's, that's really, mm -hmm. that's. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, nice job. Yeah, it looks good. Um, I'm just trying to fit the 2.9 in the triangle yeah. at the top. <laughs> Because we know the conversation is going to come up again of outsourcing. We've put that to bed. Oh, I, oh, I know. I'm well aware. It, in presenting, again, in that context of, you know, right. But I, that bottom no, number but no, will grow. grow. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that that's what needs to be. Yeah expressed. And, and not only that, but what Melinda said earlier, 80 students or in the culinary program, there was 120 that signed up. We had to turn students away. Clearly, we're starting to do something right in mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. Why would we break what we're finally starting to get right and outsource anything? Right. So I think that's part of that. That 2.9 million, uh, although it's the lowest number for the lowest census, it's some of the most important times in our students' lives, just as they're becoming adults. And we are now providing a path pathways for them to become successful. I think if we really celebrate our successes, mm -hmm. that will that will show mm -hmm. show out right away. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not it's not only the culinary, but it's it's everything that we've been right. doing. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. And and yep. people can see that we're having a lot of success. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, but we're getting there. I, mean, I was shocked as everybody else when she said 80. Out of 200 kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. We were sad to turn people away, um, but we had to make sure that some of our seniors got the opportunity because they're graduating, but we needed to stop building the four year program, so we had to include those freshmen, right, that are going to go all the way through. Yep. So it was, yeah, it was a balancing act there. And I think, you know, understanding, I, we'll have more data next year, but understanding how many students take pathways is going to be really important at that $2.9 mm -hmm. million number. 
as we grow yeah. the high school and the pathways program in the future. Yep. Good. And I'll put in my briefs that I did contact the state about uh, VOAG, um, and I'll let you know what their response was. <laughs> I'm sure not any a, different a than I heard I figured, six years I ago, figured, but, but um, I will can't give you that information. Coke. And right. then I believe the last slide, um, 21 on page 11, was the idea, and I think, uh, Justin, this was one of your requests, like how much of our budget is actually fixed, mm -hmm. and Bill calculated it at 86% of our budget is fixed costs. I did put the definition of a fixed cost up there. Um, and then just kind of tried to detail out some non-fixed costs. What are those things? Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to, I mean, I know that we know, um, but does it does it make sense to somehow on this slide clarify that the only place that we are able to cut is in that red piece of pie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and generally that is a detriment to the general ed population? Yep. Well, and, and, and a de I mean, if you look at the non-fixed costs, the detriment you take away from any of those non-fixed costs, right. and you you are directly taking away from a student's education. Yep. yep. And it's the general ed students. General ed students, yep. I would have thought the number would have been higher than 86. <coughs> Me too. I, 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 I guess if wishes were fishes, I, I wish we could get it through to people, people in general, the, the, the people that are going to show up and vote, that we start taking away that 14... From that 14 percent, people need to remember when they were in school the opportunities that they had when they were in school, whether it's here or someplace else. And I had amazing opportunities in my small town school that I grew up in that all would have come out of that 14 percent, you know. And they, we do some of that here, or we've brought some of that back here, and but so many things that we don't have here because it keeps getting whittled down and people uh, there's people my age people that are older than i am that had these opportunities regardless of what town they were in that if they say oh well why don't our kids have that because you keep cutting the book you know you keep voting no and and so I, I don't know how to express that to people i wish we, i wish we could um well it kind of goes back to that grant slide a little bit because I think over the years we've just been fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time to get these grants and help us move the agenda forward yeah um, and if those grant dollars weren't there I'm afraid culinary wouldn't exist and Absolutely. and the electric boat welding program wouldn't exist so um, we've really relied on that luckily they've been there but at some point, right, those not, dollars are going to stop flowing. Right, and it's not luck. It's hard work on mm -hmm. you and your staff's part. Right. I mean, it's not luck. Um, no, you're right. It isn't luck, but I'm grateful that we, we've been able to use those dollars well, that way. But a lot of times it's luck that it's granted to us. Yes. Yes. Right. 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 All right, other questions or comments? Um, I'm just a little concerned with the language side of the non-fixed costs to me that kind of rereads as discretionary and it's not mm -hmm. none of it is discretionary um, I, I, and I, I'm sorry I don't um, this is one of those moments where I don't have a suggestion as to what to say right. with it yeah um, we used to always call it fixed and discretionary in years past. I don't know if that discretionary is not a good word though. <coughs> right. it sound when it like comes oh, to you don't need it. Yeah. 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 Optional. Yeah. 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 Obligatory and less obligatory. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> look, if I guess my question is, if I'm a taxpayer and I'm sitting in front of this and I say, okay, well, if, if those are non-fixed costs and they can just take that out of the pie, then really all yeah. they need is 18.25 million and we're done. That's not the case, right? You, you, 
Uh, very often in this conversation, you talk about fixed costs and variable costs. And variable actually fits. Yeah. 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 I like that yeah. better. Distinction that fixed variable costs, costs with, uh, with enrollment. Or contracted and non-contracted. There's, yeah. there's different ways to put it. Again, that's really going to be part of the narrative and the presentation. Yeah, and in this, like Bill just said, in the speaker's notes, all of this is obligatory. Yeah. Right. There's, there's, I think, because I went over it again this weekend, <clears throat> maybe 100,000 of what is in there somewhere could be manipulated to support one program or another, but really we're already on shoestrings and bubblegum and duct tape. So mm -hmm. let's not take it any lower. If, if you know, we're shoestrings, bubblegum, and duct tape, mm -hmm. we're going to just be on shoestring and bubblegum. That, 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 that wiggle room over the last few years has just gone. Well, the make it work room, right? right. I mean, it we started, that's where we started like four yeah. weeks ago, the make it work room with, with the, the <coughs> costs at which it costs to educate a student, that make it work room gets smaller and smaller every year. That's all I got. Okay. I think we just have to be careful is just my opinion. We say there's no wiggle room, and yet this year we brought back IT people after the after the budget. We brought back Paris, and I don't know where the money's come from, but we've actually done that. Last year at budget time, we said there's no wiggle room, but now we brought things back. Some were grant funded, yeah. It, it, it's, I, I just want to be careful. But that leads about to that. that conversation of where people think that we're. Finding, finding money, right. finding money. Yes. Yes. and it's which is th which is my point exactly. Right. I just want to be careful when we say there's no wiggle room. There's, there's no wiggle room. But, so, but sometimes it's it's more of a putting out a fire. You know what I mean? So it's not as if there's that money sitting around. It's just that you have now have to prioritize. Oh, you're going to change. The money moves you're going to move it all around fire, you know? and hope and hope right. that special ed comes in lower it's and hope you game. have some money right. and hope that we don't have to fill up the tanks one more time. I, right. I, yeah. I get it. I've been doing this a long no, time. Right. I just want to choose our words carefully. Mm -hmm. right. So okay. I think is either part of slide 11 or part of slide 12. <laughs> you could even use it as part of slide 14 is to use in the speaker's notes what, when you got the reduction, when we, now I'm the we, I can't say the you anymore. When we got the reduction last year, what did that impact? That, yes. And then yes, you were able to put back positions X, Y, and Z. That was a slide. But yeah. I was able to do that with grant X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. And what the fiscal cliff is on that grant were you able to get impact letters on that? She can't hear it. She can't hear it. Yeah, she's reading. I'm writing. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Were you able to get any impact letters from the teachers or anything? I know you had talked about asking. So I, I, I put feelers out there. Teachers will write something for sure. I mean, for me, I'm a data girl. So, I yeah, mean, going sure. back to that Dibbles data is pretty profound for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Compare it to last year's oh. dibbles, and oh, absolutely, yep. that's not okay. Right. And that's the first hard data we've seen um, where we assume, right, that that's the direct correlation because that's the only thing that changed there. And I would fight yeah. to the end of that because that's yep. the most important thing we can do in the school is teach them to read, and we have to teach them at a young age. And, I, and it's just yeah. a crime if we don't. Mm -hmm. it, morally, a, it's wrong. Yeah. I had a student in um, kindergarten last year, and I have one in kindergarten this year, a child, and I can see the difference in programming and like what's happening in the classroom from one year to the next, the loss of the parents. So, and again, the finding of the money, I, I, whether we put it in, an, and I I agree I don't want to get into a million slides. Mm -hmm. So I think putting it in the context of either nine, uh, 10, 12, or 14, to bring up that although the budget was reduced last year, this is what it directly impacted, the Dibble data in the, in the lower elementary school. 
but also we were able to resecure positions because of because we froze the budget early on because we we're not Secure. buying supplies because we Secure did all these things yep. because we think this is much more important than whatever we did. Then a, an extra field trip to here yeah. or a, this well, trip to there. Yep. I, I think that's important because most, I mean, I know as a student growing up, some of my most memorable moments were those field trips, were those out of school moments, were those mm -hmm. extra moments. And if we're not giving those to the students, then what are we giving our students? All right, what else? Um, Helen has her hand. Um, oh, can, can we merge 16 and 17 onto one slide? It looks like we probably have enough room to do so. 16 and yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and and Yes. Though, and the same kind of comment to the 18 and 19, I know there's a lot of data, so I don't really know how that would happen. Um, but I, I don't know. It would be it would be good if it was. Maybe that's too much there to put on mm -hmm. the slide. Uh, but well, I'm just wondering if instead you maybe the way that it's formatted, if it were two columns and then you just did a bold print underline and then maybe what it, the impact is below it and then move on to the next one. Do, 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 you know what I mean? Versus have it tabbed and. Mm -hmm. And 18 stuff. and 19 are what we just talked about putting in almost the right. speaker's notes instead of full slides yeah. on the own. But I, I, I see what Heather's saying. It'd be much more effective mm -hmm. if you had a mm -hmm. list this big right. rather than two little ones. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think we need to continue to push forward to the things that we lost with the amount of cuts that we did have yep. to the proposed budget last year. That's because it's yep. always, well, they make do, they make do, and now it's coming home to roost. Yep. Do we really need slide two? <laughs> I'm just asking, do we really need that? I mean. I don't know, that was added. You I know. mean, um, slide three, the no, duty. No, two, two, two. Listing all of us, do, do we need to be to in there? Over it though? Like, is there a legal there. requirement? No. Is there a legal requirement to have no. us in there? No, but we work hard. I know, and, I know. And we're here. <laughs> For more than one meeting a I month, know. and I know. damn it, I want people to know that I'm part of this. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just. I vote leave it. <laughs> like, I, and if we we're, can take out the school stuff if you want. If we're if we're talking about reducing slide count, right? If that's where we're going right. with this, I don't have any opposition to merging two and three. Yeah. Oh yeah. We are the board. Yeah. List it over that picture on the left, and yep. then these are our duties. That works. Mm -hmm. I, just I like have, that. I just have a couple more kind of formatty <laughs> questions. Um, number seven, can we make the, the, the black text bold or larger? Yeah. Because it, with it being gray on kind of blackish gray, it's not as visual. And then on 15, um, uh, slide 15. I don't know if um, that total reduction over the past nine years that's off on the right hand side because that's pretty jaw dropping. I don't know if that can be bold and red along the whole bottom, you know, and, and try to maybe just reduce the title or something so that it can make that happen. Sure. Um, and then one of the comments that we kind of spent some time talking about just on slide one, and um, I saw it, it was, we used this terminology last year too, the whole proposed spending plan. Um, we talked about whether we liked that terminology or not a couple of meetings ago, so I don't know. If so I don't know where we settled that. Decide what we want to say on that. <laughs> right. But there was discussion about that terminology. I mean, that's what this is. It's a... Yeah, yeah. Because it moves, it's very fluid. And it's just a plan. It's not a budget. It's, this is this is our plan. I think it's the stigma around spend the word spending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not a savings plan. <laughs> <laughs> investment <laughs> budget. Investment. I don't know. No, I, we, I, I know think we, we can leave it. I, again, I think it's yeah. it's semantics to yeah. us. It's the stigmatism around the word outside spending. of us. Right. I don't have a thesaurus in front of me. What is it normally? Budget? 
look it up. Oh, there's a lot of people who use the word budget. We'll, we'll play around with it and bring back some suggestions. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> and then my only last comment was the um, if if not necessarily or maybe maybe if we want it for the town hearing, um, but definitely for the board of finance when we start doing that um, is is that whole idea of um, plant maintenance. Um, if uh, if we can get that big nice long list of what Bill Birch mm -hmm. needs to it. have done, and if we can estimate what that large nut is for the this laundry list and then really bring home to the Board of Finance that we have only asked for 167 or whatever it was thousand dollars for this year because we know we're trying to be fiscally responsible fully knowing that there's this laundry list that needs to get done that it's going to cost know? a lot more can when we, you're can we uh, can we um, plan on another tour mm -hmm. for the Board of Finance and any public so we can see some of the things that really need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. I think that had a huge impact when we did that a couple of times. Yes. Uh, and they saw the weight room, how the floor was coming up, and they saw the lockers, how that. Before, before. Before, maybe before they start their deliberations or early in their deliberations. Uh, yes. And hopefully they'll show up. Oh. Well, yeah. And we can point out what we took out. Right, right. Yeah. And this is what we need, this is what we took out. And this is your building, and you know, do you want to maintain it? Yes. Go Could ahead. we add that to like when we have them and we do that combined presentation, since they would all be here for that, have them that's part of the presentation is they have to actually do the tour of the building. Sure, it's not start, optional. Start it's, well. Well, yeah, or you that, know could, I mean. that could be number one on the agenda. <laughs> right. Hey, we're going for a walk. Exactly. Right. I, I, I don't see why not. And at Bring a minimum, issues. even if they don't come, right? I mean, maybe we should snap a little couple of like photo I gallery to include in that list for that. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll just make sure it's muted. And then that, that they'd have that with that laundry list, a sure. photo backup of, of some of the more yeah. prominent issues, you know? Well, then the people in the audience could also come. Sure, why don't you come? There's going to be maybe 14, so why not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Justin. Two notes. One note is, I don't care if it's in the context, I don't care if we put it on a slide somewhere, I do want people aware that we are planning for that athletics maintenance mm -hmm. next year. I don't care if it's on a slide, I don't care if it's part of the present verbal <laughs> presentation context. I want them to know that we're thinking about that. That's is there number a blank one. line in the budget for that now? There's not. Bill said we're going to add it next year. That it didn't. So we're not going to put a blank placeholder in the budget now? I don't think there's going to be much maintenance on a brand new right. track That's right why year we're not one. It yeah, year. We're right. But to at least just show we're thinking about that going forward. Yeah. Well, we could start next year with a little something in there, because all the not only the track but the equipment around the track right. is going to need to be maintained and replaced. Well, and like the, my comment when we first started that was basketball, you know, gym floors, yeah, bleachers, anything that involves athletics. <laughs> goes into that athletics maintenance fund. But, but the thing is, if we don't spend it, we got to give it back. Right. We can't save it. So if we're going to say, this is what we're going to do, maintain the track, and we don't maintain the yep. track, we give it back. Or if we say we're going to buy equipment, we don't buy it. So we got to kind of know going in yep. exactly what we're going to do. And we certainly can save for it or put something in line, but if we don't use it, it we have to return it. Mm -hmm. Wait, I have one. Sorry. <laughs> Portrait of a graduate. The context behind that. Can we get some graduate stories? Just a couple of highlight graduate. You know, class of 2018 is now an X. Class of 2019, now an X. Class of 2020, now an X. Like, we say portrait of a graduate, and I've listened to this for three years. We portrait of a graduate, and we work hard, and community connected and knowledgeable. I mean, I can think of five people, and... Danielle's on here as well. I'm sure th she can think of five people off the top of her head that exude every single day, every single one of these qualities. It's a portrait of a graduate, but we never bring actual real portraits of a graduate to these presentations. And I think that can be impactful to the town. That there are people that have graduated from Tartalot that are back contributing to the community 
that are, are community connected, that are independent people, that are making money, that are owning property in town and contributing to society. But even if they're not in town, right? right. Still, we have yep. graduated decent yep. human beings that are making a living and contributing wherever they're living. Yes. Right? The yeah. Alumni Association may, may know people's stats. You know, I know for my graduating so, class, I mean, we have, there's an OBGYN, higher ups at ESPN, you know, there's there's a lot of people that have really... I think if you're trying to positions. relate it back to the work we've been doing more recently, mm -hmm. then, the you know, I can, I can name kids off the top of my head that are already in a, a success pattern. But I think that's important. As much as we talk about a Portugal graduate and, and how we've built this program, bringing some concrete back into that mm -hmm. of what the, who those students are what they've done, where they are, and that they grew up here in Turtle Lot and are successful because of it. So I think it should be limited to like the last three, four years. It's really yeah. when we started pushing the POG. Right. Unless anybody disagrees with that. The no, only no. issue is, is last three, four years, if they've gone on to college, they haven't Graduated finished yet. yet. True. So, however, they could still highlight how they're foundation here was able to give them success throughout their college years too. Uh, we, we recently had back some students okay. that are a freshman in college mm -hmm. and they gave clear indication of what was very successful leaving the high school and what advantages or what, what they were trying to get across to the student body is these things exist for you to and opportunities exist here at Turtle Lot you need to take advantage of them because when you go to college, you're going to rely on those things. And they're here. Don't ignore them. They're here for you. So they did a nice job with that. So um, I know that there's some students in that group and even actually older. I think of Matt mm -hmm. Grauer, for example, um, you know, graduating this year with fire science, but obviously from a fire background. But he took some of those classes here, so he had a leg up when he went into college. Well, so. Maddie's getting his master's this year. so Yeah. Wow. Yep. We have Jalen too. Yeah, Jalen's special uh, special education teacher yep. in Shrewsbury. And Dylan's a Dylan's also getting his master's this year as well. So yep. there's, there's plenty to go around. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, back to this. Anybody have more questions, concerns, comments? Okay. Citizens' comments. Mr. Harbor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I might. Comment on some of the same slides that you've already talked about. Sure. Um, a number. Uh, I'm a numbers guy. Uh, page 11, uh, slide 11. I guess it is. Budget drivers. And it's kind of a general question. I see that in the healthcare, we show the increase due to the new employees, and that's a substantial chunk of the of the $268,000. In the salary increases, and I know there's there's sort of the contractual part. But don't we, this is budget to budget. Yes. Don't we have a lot of increases, budget to budget, in terms of personnel? We do. Isn't that a big chunk of, it's not just contractual it's, increases, it's actual budget to budget now, not real, right. real. The budget. reason they're included in the contractual bucket is because, well, those new, I, a bit of this is managing it to one slide. Okay. okay. Um, sure. So, those, although they are new, their salaries are still contractual. You have to, you have to pay them a certain. If you're bringing in a teacher, that's a certain staff. Oh, okay, so you're saying that, yeah. It's specified. Mm -hmm. um, I had toyed with the idea of breaking it out, but similar to healthcare in right. terms of on existing employees versus new. Yep. But you have, I, I felt like the distinction of the buckets was more meaningful, and if you do that for both, now you've got eight sub bullets, and it starts to just get so. I think there's too much detail on the slide already, but I lean towards conciseness on slides and embellishment in words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people look at that and they go, yeah, well, yeah. One it's thought, too much. Which is, exactly, the, which is exactly what we had said hate earlier. Yeah. That's just years of financial presentations in a corporate cool. environment. Same, I have the same guilty background. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was almost thinking that the salary increases, whether it's paras, teachers, custodial, admin, who cares, 
salary increases are X, right. as opposed to four yeah. lines or whatever it is. If you're looking right. for lines. Right. Um, one of the things I noticed, when this, I, I, I don't have an answer for this, just a sort of a question, but when miscellaneous is the third biggest item on there uh, in terms of increases, that, that so, wow. so I would be miscellaneous, be, you know, I was ready for this one. I, I, and I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's one of the supplemental pages you have available. Mm -hmm. So, so that that bucket is a little bit bigger than I would have liked. Um, I also know Kristen is isn't a fan of others. Also, I picked that up over the past meetings. <laughs> but when you get to a point where you're talking about items that are individually six thousand dollars, oh, less, I understand that side too. There's there's that. just a there are so many items in there gotcha. that make up that two thirteen. I mean, I, I mean, we got down to a. I felt like culinary was a good breaking point at, sure. at the twenty one. Sure. Uh, once again, trying to manage it on 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 one slide, but I, I see what you're I do see what you're saying. Maybe a supplementary you know, details are in but the just up just on the for your information, or something. it's. I knew this was coming. So hold on. I'm not sure there's <laughs> things in there. <laughs> it's it's things like uh, there's some dues and fees in there. Software. Um, yeah, things like that. Other supplies. It's 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 a it's truly a miscellaneous. Oh, there. it is. It wasn't a. But it's it's the, 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 the concern I would have would be it's two hundred thousand dollars. Holy cow! That's a lot of miscellaneous. As a yeah, when you've detailed two hundred sixty-eight thousand, two thirteen is. But maybe again, because there are so many things, maybe they'll just sort of yeah, supplement the page available yeah. or some, you know something like that. So just for fun. Um, uh, May I, Steve? Um, the budget is available. Right, the the, oh, the, yeah. the break, yeah. So the budget's available, sure. and so you can look at every if, if single anybody account, wants sure. to get in the weeds. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, on the next page, the twelve, uh, do you think because a suggestion or makes an idea with per, putting percentages help a little bit? Seven million is uh, whatever that is for sure. to be of the total. That maybe don't want to just because I know the one forty nine is going to be less than one. Yeah. So. Justin, do you want to say something? Yeah, just it, to supplement what Steve was and Bill were just talking about with the other increases, maybe in the speaker's context for Bill, or whoever's you know, whoever the speaker is, the context can have the major contributors to those other increases. Or, or, or it includes this for six, this for ten, yeah. this for four. Like as, yeah, as we, an example, we know that Chromebook. Yeah. I think Chromebooks are in the that other line, right? Probably because it's an over ten thousand increase. Right. So, uh, but although although it's an under ten thousand increase, it's still very important. Yeah. Right. As we move forward, I think the presentation is one thing, but when the board of finance dives deeper into it, they'll want to know pretty much what those mm -hmm. miscellaneous stuff. But just for the presentation, you know, this this is everything under ten thousand dollars or whatever it is. Including but not limited to, and yeah. then big drivers yeah, to that. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the speaking points. Sorry. On slide 15, um, I would just line up the reductions. It almost looks like the 1,050,000 is like the 15. Um, so yeah. just put, you know, uh, put it all, all up to the right side, kind of line it up a little bit. Might might help make that seem more dramatic, or seem as dramatic as it is, quite frankly. And I would also put the four million dollar in. I think you suggested to have their bigger font or yeah, something. Yeah, bold and red on the bottom, like, like a nice big line. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, on the next page, sixteen. Um, for me, I would really somehow highlight that w there's no special ed increase over the current budget or something. And again, going back to what I talked about last time, we've never been able to only keep it to the prior year budget. And if we can do it next year, great. But that's a built change from the, the history. Which but, but to that point, we've never been able, we know there's going to be increases in the power line. We know there's going to be increases in professional development. So well, we, 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 know that we know we're going to go over in that too. So you should be advocating for us to keep that in there too, not just special ed. Well, if you know the power is going to cost you more next year, it ought to be in a budget. 
we know we know we know everything's going to we know it's going to go up every year every year we have to do that no i we we know it's going to be up it's going to go up we know they're going to be the first ones to be cut we know that that's what's going to happen it happens every year so we should be advocating as much for that as that hundred thousand dollars for special ed but, I, but I, if I understand your point, right, we do have, I think, in the budget, the increases are, are in there for the powers that you expect to have, the teachers you expect to have. That's all in there. I, this is not I, I would argue that we don't have enough in there. Mm -hmm. We know we need more than that. If you get another, like to Phil's point, if you get three more special ed kids, that they might require paras, so that would make or you what you say. Yeah. 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 Right, I understand. Yes. but I think that's, that's, that's the area that, as we've seen those volatility in yeah, over the years. And I, I, there's, it's just for me would be a point to say, we haven't been able to maintain the prior year's cost, uh, at least in many years. Oh, I, I don't disagree so, at all, but if I was gonna advocate for keeping that in, yep. I'd advocate to keep a lot of other stuff in too at the same time. Well, I'm hoping you do. We're, we're, uh, I, I, <laughs> I am. We're trying to give you the most Fiscally Slim down, fiscally responsible I, I, budget. I, 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 There's yeah. plenty of things we want the students to have um, that we go yeah, back to the original. Go back class, to that, right? yeah. Right. No, I don't so, necessarily advocate that. I know how the yeah. departments uh, I, come into yeah. budget presentation. Um, on the page 18, and I, again, I not that I have an answer for this. It's just a question. Uh, let's, let's take the third item: the loss of the part-time secretary, and I'm sure it's very painful, but. I could see somebody saying, oh, the response time was a little slower, big deal. Is there a better way to, can we describe that in a more meaningful way? And, yeah. and maybe there isn't, again, I just raise that question. Because again, I can see people saying, yeah, big deal, so what, they had to wait an extra hour, 10 minutes, hmm. who cares? It's a big difference when your kid is extremely sick and it takes them an hour to give you a phone call. That's a better, that's a that's, better, that's a so better story than. I really don't have any sympathy for anybody who thinks that that part-time secretary is not necessary. No, no, but, but, a, to, but to Steve's right. point, I'm not it's a, yeah. it sounds very insignificant yeah. if you right. say the way it's, you a part -time, yeah. it's a part-time secretary. It, it is a part-time secretary, but it had a huge impact. So I, I understand exactly what you're saying. If we could describe yeah. that differently. Yeah, so so if, the, if it's better to say, Somebody who needed medical help couldn't get it in time. That's a much better story than wait times were a little longer. But that's my only comment. Again, I don't have an answer, to it, but that's a yeah. that's a better explanation to select sort of the real consequences of it. Well, there's a say. safety consequence because that part time position actually did attendance and made mm -hmm. sure that those calls went home mm -hmm. to families. So there's always a so someone's, I mean, somebody's doing that, but it's at a much later point in the day that families are being contacted, and if the child is wayward, right? I, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't picking on the yeah. part-time side. No, 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 but I, I but agree I with you. you let's, let's, let's call it, let's give it a better title. Make the story or, better. Or a better example. Yeah. 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 The same, I, the I same thing on the part-time technician, technology technician, a little longer wait time. Well. Okay, who cares? It's an extra hour, but it really means that means kids were two weeks behind before they get their phone yeah. to work, and it really put them behind the school. I think, to me, that would be more meaningful than longer wait time. To me, that's very vague. Yeah, yeah, and and Melinda, on that note, to what Steve just said, I think it's not only longer wait time for the student, but impact to the teachers and then the mm -hmm. learning environment as a whole. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, but, uh, and the most important thing is if it was a wayward child who just decided to yeah. not right. get on the bus, right? The parents need to know that. That's a real safety concern. A safety concern. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seems like we're balancing our budgets on the backs of the lowest paid employees, the paras, the cafeteria mm -hmm. staff, the part-time secretaries. Okay, great, we're, we're, we're eliminating a half a person, we're eliminating a para, and yeah, it's big, big impacts for small salaries, and it, disturbing impacts on on our on our lowest paid employees, and it, it just highlights how important everybody is, but how important people are. You know, the 
from the ground up. From the ground up, and yes. everybody's ne ne necessary to, to have this uh, learning environment. Um, I would argue that the parents are one of the most important people yeah. in this school, yeah. and yet we cut them all the time. We get more bang for the buck, and oftentimes their insurance is more than their salary, yep. what we pay. It's, right. it is, it, it's odd, but they, they are so necessary for the school, and yet we cut them all the time. So I, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Well, there's... There's our, um, what is that report that we have to do that makes us nuts, uh, where we have to balance the certified staff against uh, the special education staff and make sure there's a right maintenance, of effort. maintenance of effort report. And that is all calculated on certified staff and having the right balance. Mm -hmm. And if that balance is off, then we don't meet our maintenance of effort. And so it's all these other things that go behind you know and so we always look at right what we can't lose a classroom teacher so what's outside of that mm -hmm. that we can reduce at least that's my mindset yeah. when I have to go in yeah. and I know I'm gonna have to make a reduction and make recommendations to the board okay I can't move that classroom teacher so what else is going to be able to be moved I'm not saying it's not going to have a significant impact clearly the reading teacher at the middle school did Oh, we right. know we know it hurt you just as much as more ten times more than it hurt us to cut the pairs. We we know that. It, it's because you get to a point where you realize that the positions that we currently have in place are essential to support the students that are here. And Bill's not wrong. There should be more paraprofessionals, right? Um, because they do assist in the teaching and learning, and yet. Those are the first things we look at because they're not a classroom teacher. Yeah. Um, we even looked at cafeteria workers, but that's just one story. By reducing the full-time FTE in the cafeteria, we got into a union entanglement, right? Yeah. So I ended up having to have Lisa take out all the part-timers to make up that amount of money. Well, those part-timers fill a void, yeah. uh, even if they only work three hours a day, but they're here at a critical time when the staff needs them. So they're not here. So if you go into food service, those women are running. And I, I mean it's, it, running. It's, it's shameful. And, and, but our children, but go back to Justin who says we may do, we're making do on the backs of what? People are overworking and that's clear. Um, and then if someone's sick, then we have to call a part timer in because we have no other choice. Yeah. But we have reduced about six or seven part time positions to make up that one full time FTE, which has had a significant impact in that department. And so, how many paras are we talking about that got cut last year? Last year, what's that number? Six or seven. Six or, six seven, or seven at like $20,000 a piece, give well, or take. Well, 40 a piece. If okay, include, oh, benefits. include with benefits. benefits. With okay. Benefits. So, $250,000 plus the couple cafeteria workers, so not even $300,000. You spread that over the town. I mean, you're talking pennies per person to impact, deeply impact all the students. It's, it's pennies per person per year. It's, you can justify that with anything that you're taxed on, but it, it's just, so I just, yeah, we all get frustrated about this. And We're not the only school district that is facing, and I think a lot of school districts this year are facing the ARPA ESSER funding cliff. We experienced that more or less last year. Right. Um, and, you know, there are very few positions, if any, on ARP this year. No, no none of them are. Mm. So, um, I mean, we, we experienced that last year. So, I mean, it was kind of a perfect storm last year that we hit that funding cliff plus we had a big reduction and it just all came together in a very negative way. Yeah. I remember the meeting you had to make those reductions. It wasn't easy. Yeah. And 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 I know we all know this around the board, but these <coughs> teachers and administrators and paras, they're all doing it at the lowest salaries in the whole state. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. doing it when when they could go four miles away and make ten thousand dollars more. So 
we really got to advocate for our staff and it, it's just so important to keep what we have because we just can't really lose anything else. Correct. <clears throat> a couple right. more comments if I might. Sure. On the fixed cost, uh, fixed cost of Mitchell State store, um, my point on uh, fixed cost, variable cost, it's uh, in the accounting world, it's a, I guess it's a big debatable kind of issue. Um, if, fixed, if variable costs are things that vary with something, and I think mm -hmm. we're using student population as the variable, uh, what we're thinking about here, if there's a small change in, in enrollment, um, one, two, three students, those co there's almost no cost that change. The only case would be, I guess, if it's a special ed student, you know, who had big needs, extensive needs. So there's an argument to be made that the variable portion of your budget is, especially again, if the student population changes by you know, five or six or something, uh, it does. It's not going to change anything other than uh, student supplies. It could. It could change two students in each grade, but we're not going to change the amount same of teachers. teachers same we're parents, not going to. Nothing really changes at all. So, you, to your point, that it's, it's, it's almost, almost it's almost all fixed for small change. It's really right. a step function. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if you lost twenty students. Did, twenty you, students in one grade. If you're yes. Lucky yes. Every yes. one grade. Yeah. You'd have a but, change. But twenty through the whole school, nothing's going to change. Right, but we're calling it variable or not fixed. So the fixed costs are like contractually fixed costs that we can't, even if even if we totally shut the school down, we were obligated to pay for the teachers, we're obligated to pay contractually, contractually obligated costs versus the non-fixed or non-contractually obligated costs. So we could cut the late bus, but you know, we, we really shouldn't. Uh, the facility upgrades. We really need to do the ones that are the, the Bill's skeleton list so we could increase that we could increase them we can't reduce these anymore but the 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 fixed cost maybe should be contractually obligated costs so if the school shut down tomorrow we would still have to pay oh, yeah. for these things because we're contractually the teachers we'd still have to pay them they've got a contract you know we still have to pay for the buses we've got a contract so i think maybe contractually obligated costs might be a better term i don't know i'm not an accountant but Accounting world fix would be the yeah. word that we would use and know what we're talking about. Yeah. But I, I would also argue, Steve, that the majority of the Board of Finance and the majority of the town aren't accountants. You're absolutely right. So I, I <laughs> tried, we really want to make this the impact, you know, it, we, we can't get out of that 86%. You know, we got it, we got it, we have to spend that um, period. And we need to spend the other 14%. But it's just not contractually obligated. It, it, to Matt's point, the other fourteen percent, we can manipulate things within that fourteen percent, right? We can the the athletics can float between basketball and soccer and baseball, and, right? But but we can't go without it altogether, right? Even in that fourteen percent. Well, again, I, I like the late bus. If you lose, lose two students, that's not going to change the need for labor. Right. Still great, right? Right. 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 Um, also, I think it's kind of a technical. Um, talking about the tour, I think it's a great idea. I still remember one of the Board of Finance members having come back from the tour talking about he thought he'd come going to a third world facility. still remember that. That was how yeah. many years ago or something. Yeah. So it made a real impact. So it's a very impactful walk. Mm-hmm. That's it for me. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Does anybody else have questions or comments? Uh, there's a couple of citizens on Zoom. I just want to make sure we give them the opportunity. Anyone on Zoom have a question? Comment? All right. No? Okay. We good? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll second. second. We have a second from Heather. <laughs> all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you, Steve.